Good afternoon you two, welcome to this week's DT lesson. I'd like you to write today's date and skill into your catch-up book please. Today's date is Tuesday the 26th of January 2021 and your skill is to design a moving picture. I'd like to pause the video and unpause when you're ready to begin today's lesson. Off you go. This week then, in our DT lesson, we are going to be designing a moving picture and we will use this design next week to construct our moving picture. First of all then, I want you to discuss with the person next to you, have a little think on your own or have a little discussion with your grown-up at home. What do you think a moving picture is and how might we create a moving picture? So how are we going to get uh, parts of the picture to move? What materials might we use? How are we going to, to get our picture to move? Discuss this question with the person next to you. Off you go. In order to get our picture to move then we need to use things called mechanisms. A mechanism is a group of parts that make something move. So they all work together so that it moves. I want you to think then, what directions could we get our characters or our objects in our picture to move? Talk to the person next to you or to your grown up. Off you go. Okay, before we go through that then, let's have a look at these examples of moving pictures. So I'd like you to talk to the person next to you, how do you think, and there's quite a clue in the, in the slits in the paper, how do you think these characters or objects in the picture are going to move? Okay, pause the video and off you go. Let's have a look together then. So here in this first picture, we have a hedgehog and you can see he's going up and down, although it's at an angle, it's up and down, and he's jumping into the pile of leaves. So we can see that slit of paper there and he can move up and down okay the same with this one so we've got our basketball and although it's at an angle it's going up and down into like it's go, going into the hoop here then we've got a slit in the paper that goes from side to side and this mechanism goes from side to side so we've got our horse and he can go forwards or backwards like he's chasing the gingerbread man and again here we've got our astronaut that can go forwards or backwards in this the space scene Finally then, we've got this one. Now this one has a fixed point, okay? And this boat can move around that point, okay? So it's the same distance from that point where it's moving around. And let's have a look then at what these mechanisms are called and how we can use them in our picture. So we are going to be using sliders and levers in our design. These mechanisms will be what make up aspects of our picture move when we come to make it next week. So let's explore what each one is. A slider then goes from side to side and it's made by creating a slit in the paper. So you can see here we've cut two little holes in the paper and we're cutting all the way down to make this nice neat line where we can push our slider through. You can move the character and we can put our character, so here we've got a cat and we've put that on, a, it can either be on a stick or it can be on a piece of card or another piece of paper and you can move it, your character, along the slider, so forwards and backwards or side to side, okay from behind that piece of paper. So that's our slider that goes from side to side. We can also have a slider that goes up and down. You need to create a smaller slit, because this time it's not going side to side, it's just going up and down, so it just needs to be big enough to fit your slider through. And again, we've got our character, and this one's on a piece of card, but it could also be on a stick, and it can be moved up and down from, from behind. So we've got our bunny here, and it's got jumping up and down in the magician's hat. Now, it's really important then that you think about how your character or object moves in real life, okay? This will help you choose which mechanism to, to use. So we can see here my bunny, my rabbit, is jumping up and down. So it makes sense to use the slider that goes up and down rather than from side to side, okay? Finally then, we have a lever. Now a lever is a bar which turns around a point or a pivot. So here we've got our, pi our pivot, our point, and this moves around, Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk moves around this point, okay? When you're designing your lever, you need to think really carefully about how long you want the stick or the card to be, okay? And you need to think about where your point, your pivot, will be in your design. If we have a look at this example here, we've got a basketball court. If I was to have my, my pivot here, so my basketball could move around, it would go from side to side, it could go into the basketball, into the hoop. But if we were to put my pivot here, it's the same length card, if we were to put it here, 
and it was to go side to side, it would not reach the basketball hoop. So you need to think about two things then, not only the length of the piece of card or the stick that you're putting it on here, but also whereabouts you're positioning your pivot or your point in your picture. So you need to think about that really carefully today when you're designing it. Otherwise, when you come to construct it, you're going to find it a little bit tricky to make those adjustments. Okay, let's have a look then. This is an example of a moving picture, and I want you to think what mechanisms, now we've got our names, we've got sliders that go up and down, we've got sliders that go side to side, and we've got our lever that's on a pivot that goes like that, and you are going to think, look at this quick, this uh, picture, and think what mechanisms might be used. So we've got our star, we've got our rocket, we've got our astronaut, and we've got our um, spaceship. Okay, I want you to think what mechanisms might be used. I'd like you to pause the video and discuss this now, please. Off you go. Okay, so I'm sure you've come up with lots of lovely ideas. So you could have lots of different mechanisms for this one then. So for the star, you can have this on um, a slider that goes up and down, so like it's shooting up and got off, uh, falling down. And then you might also have it on a lever, so it's shooting in space like that. For your rocket, you might have it on a slider that's going up and down. Your astronaut might be on a slider that's going side to side, like it's going away from the rocket and then back. And then again with your um, spaceship, it's up to you. You might have um, either the slider that goes side to side, up and down, or the lever. Okay, so there's lots of different options. Have a look at this picture then. How could we get these characters to move? What direction will, we, will they move in? And what mechanism will we use? I'd like you to pause the video and discuss this question, please. Okay, I'm sure you've come up with lots of ideas. So if I was doing this, I would have the um, crab here going from side to side, so I'd use a slider, and I might have my submarine, as it's uh, almost like it's diving down, so I might have it on a slider going up and down, and I might have my dolphin on a lever, like it's jumping sort of through the, the water, diving through the water. Okay, but it's up to you what mechanisms you use. Finally then, one last example, what mechanisms will you use for the bird, the rabbit and Little Red Riding Hood in this picture? To talk to the person next to you, off you go. Okay, so I'm sure you've got lots of lovely ideas. So you might have the slider that goes up and down for the rabbit, you might have um, the slider that goes along for the bird, and you might have um, Little Red Riding Hood on a lever, almost like she's skipping through the forest. Up to you, okay, there's no right or wrong answer. Let's think then about our design criteria. So when we're making our moving picture design, we need to think about a couple of things whilst we're designing. So the first thing with them, we need a setting. So for example, space, a forest or under the sea, and it's completely up to you what setting you use today. There's lots of examples, but you can choose your own. Now that's the first thing you need to think about is where is your, is your moving picture going to be set? You then, once you've got your setting, need to think about your characters or objects you're going to add to your scene or your setting. And it needs to relate to your setting, okay? So there's no point having an astronaut if your setting is under the water, for example. You then need to think about the colours you'll use for your setting and your characters. Okay, so really clear colours, we need lots of different colours so that it's not all the same to make it nice and engaging. Then you need a sensible size, so you need to make sure that you can really clearly see your characters. It's going to be very tricky if your character is really, really small, because it's going to be hard to get it to stick onto um, the levers and the sliders. And you also need to make sure it's a sensible size, so you don't want your character too big, so that you can't fit any other characters or objects onto your picture. When you're designing then, once you've thought about your setting and your characters, and I'm going to, show you, going to show you an example of all this put together in a moment. But when you're designing, you need to label your mechanisms. So you need to say whether your character, say you had um, an astronaut, is it going to be a slider that goes up and down, or a slider that goes side to side, or is it going to be on a lever? So you must label your mechanism so that when you come to create it next week, you know exactly what you need to make. You then need to draw, by using arrows, which again I'll show you on the next slide, you then need to draw the direction of your mechanism. So you're going to use arrows for this, and you, with your label, so for example if you're doing a slider that goes up and down, you're then going to have your arrows so that it's really clear when you come to make it next week. Okay. Before you create your design then, so now we've thought about our design criteria, I would like you to just uh, pause in a, couple, in a couple of moments, and I would like you to think 
what setting will you use and what characters will you include? Now I'd like you to include at least three moving parts, at the very least. So you need to think of at least three characters or objects that will go onto your scene. So again, here are some examples. We've got a jungle. Oh, we've got a jungle, we've got a space, a forest, like a woodland, or um, under the water, so under the sea. And again, they're just examples. You might come up with your own idea. It's completely up to you what your background will be and what your characters will be. So I just want you to pause the video and you might jot down some ideas. I'm just doing like a little mind map. Um, just jot down some ideas of what your setting and your characters will be. Pause the video, off you go. Okay, I'm sure you've had lots of different ideas then. Hopefully you've chosen one that you're going to go with. So one setting and one group of characters that you'll, you'll use that relate to that setting. Okay, and then I want you to think about how, once you've got your characters and your objects, how will they move? So if you've got a rabbit, for example, let's go back to our previous example. If you've got a rabbit, it makes sense that that slider goes up and down because it jumps. Um, so think about how your characters would move, your objects would move, and then what mechanism you will then need to use. Off you go, pause the video. Okay, so hopefully you've got an idea before you can complete your design. And then, have you used more than one mechanism? So it's really important that we're not all just using sliders that go side to side. You might have a mixture, so you might have one that goes side to side, one that goes up and down, and then one on a lever. Okay, so the more mechanisms you can include, the better. And then, when you, when you come to actually draw your design in a minute, because we're just gathering ideas at the minute, where will you position your characters? So have a think, if you've got um, a tiger in the jungle, are you going to have it floating in the air, or are you going to have it almost like it's on the ground? Okay, so think about where you'll position your characters and your levers and your sliders. Pause the video and just have a little think. Okay. Let's have a look then, before you go on to draw your design, let's have a look at what your design should look like. Now you need to remember three things. You need to remember the approximate size of your characters or objects, so in relation to your scene, so we don't want it too small and we don't want it too big. Which parts move and what mechanisms they'll use. And an arrow showing the direction of movement. So these are the three arrows. So we've got a slider, so you're going to label slider, and if it's up or down, you'll draw this arrow. If you're going to, uh, to label it slider that goes side to side, you'll draw this arrow. And then if you label um, lever, this is the arrow you will draw so that next week you, can, you know exactly what you need to do when you're constructing it. So here's my example then. So I've drawn my background. This is my, I've chosen under the sea. And then I have picked four characters and objects. So the first one, I've got a submarine and I've put my submarine and I've labelled it really clearly, I've labelled slider and then I've, ch I've drawn the arrow to, sh to show that my slider is going from side to side. I've then also added a dolphin and I've put a lever, so I've labelled lever and then I've drawn my arrows that go like that, okay, to show how that, the direction of movement for the dolphin. I've added a crab. So I've drawn my, I've added slider as my label, and then I've shown again that it's a slider that goes side to side. And finally, I've added a scuba diver, and once again, I've made sure I've, I've made sure I've labelled it with a slider, and then I've also drawn the arrow to show the direction of the movement. And this slider is going to go up or down. Okay. So I now want you to put all of this thinking that we've done today together, and on a piece of paper or in your catch-up book. I would now like you to create your design. So remember, you can come back to this slide, you can come pause this slide and watch it again to think, what do I need to include? And your design should look like this, okay? But obviously with different backgrounds and different characters, depending on what you'd like to draw. But it must have the labels and it must have the arrows with the direction of movement. Okay, so I'd like you to pause the video. Off you go, please. Okay, finally then, to end up today's lesson, you will be using your designs to construct your moving picture next week. So as your final activity today, I would like you to think about what your steps will be to make your picture. So what will you do first, almost like you're creating a, a set of instructions in your head. So what will your steps be to create your moving picture? So I'd like to pause the video and discuss this with your partner or your grown up at home or have a little think. Off you go. Okay, step one then, you will need to make your background first of all. We cannot cut the um, slits out of the paper or attach the characters if we haven't got a background to attach them to. The second thing then that you'll be doing next week, you're going to cut your slots into your background. 
You're then going to draw your characters. Stick your characters onto the sticks or the strip, strip of card. And then lastly, you are going to assemble the moving parts by putting them in place following your design. So it's really important then that when we come to make this next week, we think about these steps really carefully in order to make our picture. Okay, I'm really looking forward to seeing all your designs of your moving pictures year two. Well done, have a lovely afternoon. Goodbye.